Hi friends, my name is Bruce Herwig and I'm here with a Making It Magical presentation with Mansion Memories. And today we're going to be talking about all kinds of things, beautiful things in the universe. The moon, meteors, the Milky Way, star trails, some just amazing things that I've had the, the privilege of taking uh, pictures with. Now, Mansion Memories is a nonprofit here in the local area, uh, helping kids in crisis. And since COVID, they've had to switch the things that they do in person to online. And it's been so much fun watching some of these presentations and uh, just all the interaction we've had online. And I'm looking forward to doing this with you today. So if you're all ready, let's get started. Uh, you know, we live in such a beautiful city and we live in a beautiful state and we live in a beautiful year, or Earth, and uh, we live in a beautiful universe. And I just love taking a look at some of the most beautiful things that we have here. But um, this is Mount Palomar, if you've ever had a chance to visit down in the Escondido, San Diego area. And uh, this is me taking a selfie uh, in the bathroom because they put on red lights. You need a red light because it helps your eyes stay focused in the dark and uh, they don't get dilated. And so here's my family, this was a few years ago. And uh, so I had a little bit of an interest in nighttime photography, but I didn't actually ever take pictures. I take pictures all over town. Uh, I have several calendars and, and I love, I take, uh, I help vol volunteer at the Redlands Bowl. Um, but everybody needs a little bit of inspiration. And Steve Wormser, local Redlands photographer, was mine. He posted this on his website. And I was just awed. I had no, I knew that they were stars, and I knew that they were going in a circle, but I didn't know how, they, how he did that. And then he saw this picture, and he went to Joshua Tree. And I, I knew that might be a planet. I didn't know which one, but it, Joshua Tree in the dark? Ah, that, that just sounded so cool to me, but I didn't know what to do. So I figured I would get started shooting the biggest thing that I knew, which was the moon. So I started shooting the moon because I figured I could at least see it. So I waited for a full moon, and you can see here I'm capturing it. I don't know what this was going this way, but I knew the moon was going that way. And then the next thing I knew that I could find was the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is beautiful. It's big. It's in the sky. And so I was out on my porch, and I was walking in and out of the house, bumped the tripod, uh, but put it together, and I got my first star trail. Now, I had no idea how I did it, because I didn't know which way I was pointing, but I knew that I was onto something. And you can see here where I bumped things uh, in the dark. But I was so excited. And so when you get inspired, and then you have a little bit of success, that can fuel your efforts. So the moon, I just love the moon. It is so beautiful, whether it's a thin crescent. You know, you see the little, uh, the, one of those uh, movies, they have the little boy and he's fishing off that crescent moon. And as it gets a little bit bigger, that's the Earth's shadow casting itself on the moon. And then a half moon here. And that's when you can really see some of the deep craters just amazing detail that you can get here and then the full moon in all of its glory it just lights up the entire sky and uh and the the foreground and it's just you can almost you almost don't need a flashlight when it's a full moon out and it's just so pretty and so i thought one time i would show the moon moving and uh, I didn't know exactly how it moved, but I took the same moon and I put it in different places. And I did a fun little effect there as a photographer. But I got to wondering, what does the moon, how does it move across the sky? I thought maybe it would go up and over, or maybe it would go up and down. I wasn't quite sure. So I decided to spend the entire night watching and photographing the moon. And this is what it looks like. It rises here, rises in the east, goes in a perfect arch, and sets in the west. And I was just fascinated. What I call this the pearls of the moon. This is every four minutes. The moon is moving really fast across the sky. In fact, 
it, uh, it takes every 27 days it goes around the Earth and through its, uh, uh, through its different phases. And it's going over 238,000 uh, uh, miles an hour. It's just incredibly, and it's, uh, it's a thousand miles around, so it's pretty big, and uh, we get to we get a chance to see it all the time. Now, when the Earth, when you see the Earth, and it goes right in front of the sun at exactly the right angle, you get an eclipse, and this was one of the blood moons, and you can see here this, the uh, the shadows coming in, and the colors getting deeper and redder. And uh, it was just so fascinating to see uh, get red, and as it, then it goes red, and then it goes back to uh, back to the other color, go back back to the traditional gray or yellow that we see. So well, you can take the moon far, or if you have a fancy camera and you put one of these on there, you can take the moon shots really, really big. In reality, the moon is about the size of a nickel. If you hold a nickel up and you put it up uh, in the air, it's about the size of a nickel. So either you have to go to the moon in an astronaut, and I fully expect one of you to be the next astronaut going to the moon and going to Mars. So go to school, pay attention, do your math homework, listen to, uh, listen to your teacher, do your science, and go to the moon for me. Take a picture. So to get it this big, you either have to go to the moon or you can pull the moon in with a big lens like that. So if you took that nickel and you brought it right to your eye, it would look huge. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm about a mile, mile and a half away. Had that big old long lens. And uh, this is over in Cabazon where you've seen some of those windmills. And I just was jumping up and down. I was so excited the first time that I got it. I almost forgot to take the picture. It was uh, so neat to see, and the moon is so going so fast. Well, I've had a chance to do this several other times. This is out uh, in Calamesa, uh, standing in front of the Bob's Big Boy, looking out, and I thought it was a water tower. To come to find out, it's a cell phone tower. But the moon rising up there, perfectly positioned. And then just on Monday, it was a full moon, moon rising. It was the full core moon. And this was over in uh, Riverside at Mount Rubidoux with the cross there and the moon, uh, moon rising right behind it. And what I found fascinating is you can still see the people, the little tiny people over here, and uh, in such great detail. It's so much fun to shoot the moon. Now, Neowise Comet uh, was the uh, most brilliant comet that we've seen in the last 20 years. And uh, a comet uh, was at the point, right here in Redlands, went to the point, and I heard that the comet was coming. Uh, comets are fickle. They're made out of um, ice and dust and rocks and things like that, and they fly around. And if they get too close to the sun, they kind of break up and fizzle out. Well, this one came and it uh, showed brilliantly in the night sky. And I was thinking, boy, this is a lot of fun. There's the neon comet. But I kept seeing these pictures on the internet, and they were much better than mine. So I said, I better go out again. So I don't know what time you get up in the morning. Maybe seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Some of you early risers, maybe you got up at six o'clock. I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning to go up here to Lake Gregory, right up here in our San Bernardino Mountains and waited there and to see the ne uh, comet Neowise rising. I gotta tell you, it was breathtaking. Now, you can't see everything uh, with your eyes. It's very difficult to see, but the camera can catch things that your eyes can't, and the darker, the better. Went out to Joshua Tree. As the comet got closer to the sun, it was spewing off more and more uh, of its tail, its tail got longer, and you could actually see the two tails. One is an ion trail, and I'll show you here in the details. But this was sitting under uh, no moon with the neon comet in the background, and boy, that park was full. Joshua Tree National Park, and literally thousands of people came 
to see the neon, to, to try to get a glimpse of this beautiful comet. And uh, it was wonderful. Big Bear, right up here on our local San Bernardino Mountains. This is Boulder Bay, and it just looks so Thomas Kincaidish. It's just, it's just like a fairy tale dream with this comet in the background. And again, you can see both tails. Here's a close up using that big old long lens that I have. And uh, this is the, the primary tail, and this is the secondary ion tail. This tail here, it follows the trajectory of the sun. So you know where, uh, I'm sorry, this is the trajectory of the comet. So you can tell the comet was going this way, it was moving down because the tail goes this way. This is directly where the sun is. So if you go point right down over here, the sun was down over this way. But it's just fascinating. As it got brighter and brighter, um, I was just so pleased to be able to capture this. I don't know if we're going to have one in the next decade. So to be able to see it and to capture it for posterity. Uh, next time, though, if you hear that there's a comet, you make sure to go out and look for it. Or at least look on the internet and find some of those neat pictures. Now, comets are unique in that they... Uh, they leave dust and dirt and uh, little pebbles, you know, as they melt, as they get closer to the sun. And those turn into meteors. When you see a meteor, a meteor is really hard to capture. And when you get one in the back of your camera, you're just doing the happy dance. Because it's kind of, you're, you're looking this way, and uh, guarantee it, if you're looking this way, the meteor is going to go over that way. And as soon as you turn around this way, you're going to hear somebody say, ooh, ah, and it's going to be over this way. So your best bet if you're trying to look for a meteor uh, is sit down, look in one direction, and just enjoy what you're going to see. You'll hear in the news that maybe, oh, there's going to be 150 in an hour, and it's just going to be the shower. I've, uh, I can't wait to see one of those but it's vastly overrated. The most I've ever seen is about 10 in an hour. And so if I ever get to see 50 or 100 in an hour, oh, that'll just be the day. But most of the time, if you see a couple in an hour, you're doing really, really good. Best spot, go to Dark Sky Area, Joshua Tree, Big Bear, Lake Gregory, Jenks Lake, any of these local areas here that have beautiful dark skies, and, you, and you'll just see those on the internet. They'll tell you when these things are coming, uh, which is exciting. This was the first uh, meteor that I ever captured. This was up in the Jinx Lake parking lot. Uh, and I didn't know that I captured it until I got home. You know, I was looking over this way or looking this way, or maybe I was tying my shoe, or maybe I was eating a snack. I don't know, but I didn't know that I got it. And I, uh, here's a little bit closer view. And it was so beautiful. See this blue color in here? See that bluish green? That's the copper. That's the metal that's in those meteors as they're coming by. Now, I always thought that meteors were flying through space and they were crashing into the Earth. It's not the case. Remember the meteors or those comets, they go by. Well, the Earth then goes around the sun. And as it comes back a year later, those dust particles are still here. So it's actually the Earth that's running into the meteors. I just, that blew me away. That's why you can have annual meteor showers. Because the meteors are sitting there waiting to be run into, and the Earth comes around, and it smashes into them, and we get this beautiful light show. Better than any fireworks. Why well, I take that back. I love fireworks. I love shooting the fireworks. I love taking pictures of the fireworks. I enjoy watching the fireworks. But these are fun too. This was another one coming through and you can see it has that sharp edge. And when you're seeing a meteor, it just lights up the entire sky. And everybody who's sitting there with you watching, ooh, ah, it's like a great show from above. This was uh, in Joshua Tree this last year for the Perseidius meteor shower. And uh, this was over a, a couple hour period of time. I captured nine different meteors uh, here in this, in this picture, and I put them all together in one shot to kind of, they come all over the sky. Now, when I'm looking this way, guaranteed, right? Where is the real fun ones? Over there, 
well, I would look this way and then somebody would say, ooh, and I would turn this way and somebody would say, ah. Oh. So that's where I learned that lesson. The Milky Way. One of the great things to see, to put yourself in uh, perspective, is an opportunity to see the Milky Way. Most people in our cities, uh, with the light pollution that we have, never have a chance to see the Milky Way. This is not our Milky Way, this is Andromeda, but it's, uh, it's the closest uh, to our galaxy. It's the closest galaxy to, to, the, to the Earth, a uh, couple million light years away, something like that. And uh, you can see it's a big round. If you think of it like a Frisbee, but it's thicker in the center, it's thicker in the center, and lighter as it goes to the left and lighter as it goes to the right, because it's a big circle. And uh, hopefully uh, next year, uh, I'll have a much better picture of Andromeda, but this is my first, uh, first try at shooting Andromeda. But it's thicker in the middle, lighter in the center. So when you go to a dark sky area, you can actually look up into the sky. Now your eyes don't see this. You see something in the sky, and you can kind of see it's hazy, kind of milky. And that's, what, that's where the name came from, the Milky Way. And that Milky Way here, thicker in the center, lighter as it goes on. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, maybe like in Australia, they actually you can see the other side. It goes lighter on the other side, down there. Here's a, here's a, it's a little bit different. Thicker in the center, hazier as it goes by. And to see the Milky Way arching across the sky, and then an opportunity to capture that. An hour and a half, door to door, here from Redlands, you can get to Joshua Tree. And here's the secret. If you go after six o'clock, the guards have already left for the evening. You don't even have to pay to get in. So you go into the park, you have, you bring your picnic lunch, you wait, you see the Milky Way, and you come on back. Do that between probably March, or uh, not March, uh, May, June, July. It's a little bit hot in July. August for sure, really, really hot. But if you can catch it early there, um, if you go out uh, and make sure there's no moon. Um, if you think of a flashlight it's on your phone, I've turned my flashlight on here. You wouldn't see a very big bright you know, light. It wouldn't be. But if you turn the lights off, you would see a really bright light. Why is that? That's because the light from the sky, you can't see the light from the flashlight. Well, think of stars like the flashlight. They're bright, but you only see them, and you can see them best when you turn out all the lights. And that's why we have to go away from the city to these dark sky areas. And Joshua Tree is a world renowned dark sky area. People come and fly in from all over the world. And if you ever have a chance to go, I would highly encourage you to do that. Here's one of our beautiful Joshua trees. Here's a Milky Way with a meteor. That was exciting, uh, shooting across the sky. And this here was uh, Jupiter and then Saturn right underneath there. This was exciting. Amboy, Route 66, right here, San Bernardino, on the way to Barstow, past Barstow, Amboy. Did you know that they have a volcanic cinder cone crater out there? And you can hike it. It's only a, it's a three mile hike. So I went with a friend and we hiked at night up this dormant volcanic crater. All the way up, here's the crater. And here was the beautiful Milky Way showing across the sky. This was in May. It was beautiful. Don't go in the summertime. Go in the wintertime. Uh, but it's, it's absolutely fascinating to see this black cinder cone crater rising up in the distance. And you can see it. And you can hike it. But the beautiful stars, just amazing views. Death Valley, one of the uh, hottest places on Earth was recorded just last month in Death Valley. I went in February. It was beautiful, <laughs> uh, temperature-wise. But this is one of the borax uh, works here with the Milky Way going across the sky there. Now again, your eyes don't see this, but the camera can capture what your eyes don't see. This was a, this is called Scorpius Arch. It's past Joshua Tree. It's one of my favorite places to shoot. It's about a quarter mile hike in. 
uh, and you can see this little arch in here. You can actually sit inside of that arch with the Milky Way going across the sky. Now, star trails. Remember those, when I first started, I showed you those star trails here? Well, this over here, you see kind of the movement of how the Earth is rotating. The Earth rotates counter, uh, clock, goes uh, this way, left to right. Rise, sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so it's going counterclockwise as it spins, and this is the axis. So if you ever thought of a globe and it has that pointy end on the top and the bottom, well that pointy end is pointing right towards, the north pole is pointing towards this area right here. Well that actually, there's a star there and it has a name. You can find it here. Well, let's see, here's the Big Dipper. Maybe it make, it make it a little bit easier to see. There's the Big Dipper. And if you follow this line straight up, you can find Polaris, also known as the North Star. And everything in our globe on Earth rotates around that North Star there. So when you point your camera there, well, if you point to the right, you can get it coming around this way. But if you go to the left, you can get it coming around this way. And it's just so pretty. This is the movements of the stars. So I asked, one time I asked, what happens if you turn around and go backwards? Well, this is what you get here. This is the, the stars move this way. And uh, the, the star trails are just one picture after the next, just like an animation, one picture after the next, right next to each other. And as the Earth moves, those stars start to, uh, you take one picture right next to each other, and you get this entire star trail. I can't wait. I just got the equipment to do an all-night star trail. Nine hours. I can't wait uh, all night long. I'm going to be very tired, but I can't wait to, uh, to do that, so hopefully sometime this winter. Now, the star trails don't look like this when you put them together. There's actually a lot of airplanes that are flying around. Uh, in fact, you can tell where Las Vegas is, and you can tell <laughs> where LAX is, uh, just going across there. And you have to edit out each one of those airplane trails in each photo. So if you have 100 photos, you probably have 200 airplanes in your photos that you have to take out and edit in Photoshop. This is another one. Uh, you can tell what's the, what's the trap, where's the traffic going. Uh, and you have to take each one of those out when you're doing. So it's so much fun shooting out, out in the night sky. This is uh, what I call light painting. Taking your flashlight and you're just running around. In fact, I have a fidget spinner and you may know our friend Dave Maupin. He's the wizard of the stars. Dave went out with me to Joshua Tree and we took his picture and that's a fidget spinner they have lights on it, and they're glowing, and I'm running around in the dark. And because it's so dark, you can't see me, but you can see the light. And uh, we wrote that out. I had to write that out backwards. Wizard. Uh, this was, uh, it took me several tries. But I think, it, I think uh, you'll agree it was worth it. You can make it look like Star Wars, and you're zooming in the hyperspace. Lasers. Who doesn't like lasers? Make sure your eyes are protected and you're looking the other way, but light painting with lasers. This is one of those crystal balls. I wanted to figure out, could you take a picture of the Milky Way through a crystal ball? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. There's the Milky Way arching across through a crystal ball. Borrego Springs, they have some amazing metal sculptures and dinosaurs. I think, oh, what if I could get the Milky Way coming out of the dinosaur's breath, like it was shooting out the flaming stars. And I said, oh, that would be fun. And I actually was able to, to capture that. They also have some other amazing pictures, or uh, amazing uh, metal sculptures, huge metal sculptures. One of my favorites here is the scorpion versus the cricket. And it's an epic battle of good versus evil. Well, I don't know about that, but it sure is neat when you put the Milky Way behind it, and uh, it's, it's uh, there, and these things are about 10 feet tall. They're huge, 
if you have a chance to go out to Barredo Springs, it's two hours here, uh, drive from Redland, so definitely take a lunch, bring lots of water, uh, but they have over 100, and, I think 180 metal sculptures around the area. It's just beautiful. And uh, again, just so brief, just so beautiful to get that moon so big here in the Joshua Tree National Park. Again, it's a dark sky area, just an hour and a half. If you have an opportunity, take advantage of it and see. It's beautiful in the day and it's beautiful in the night. The National Park says half the park is after dark. And uh, it's so much fun to go out there and see with other astronomers and other astro, uh, astro people who are interested in the stars. Now, if you ever have to have an opportunity to go to a star party, the San Bernardino Valley amateur astronomers, they put on specialized um, shows that they bring out. Their, uh, their members bring their telescopes and they set them up. They do them up at uh, uh, local here, up in uh, Oakland, at the preserve over there. They've done it. They've done one here at our library, at the AK Smiley uh, Public Library. Um, they do them all over, and these are public. Oh, they do them at the San Bernardino County Museum every once in a while. So be on the lookout for those. But if you ever have a chance to go to a star party, I didn't know what a star party was. I didn't know if I wore a hat and I had streamers and balloons. Nope. They bring their telescopes. And these guys have some fancy telescopes. I thought my lens was big. These things are huge. And they put them up and they know exactly where things are in the night sky. And they're happy to let you look through those telescopes, explain to you what you're seeing, and help you enjoy the night sky and learn about the stars. It's absolutely fascinating. And I was just so impressed with how big some of these things were. And uh, these guys are really wizards and uh, at knowing how to do it. But one time, the first time I was with these guys, they said, who wants to go scorpion hunting? Scorpion hunting? I don't want to go scorpion hunting. I thought, you remember in the movie Up, the uh, Mr. Fredrickson wanted to get rid of Russell. He said, who wants to go snipe hunting? Here, snipe, 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 snipe. Well, he actually found Kevin. Well, in this case, we actually found a scorpion. It's not a joke. They glow in the dark. Now, they're not five feet tall like you're seeing here. They're about, one time I saw a scorpion, about the size of my little pinky, uh, pinky nail. Another time I saw one it was about three inches long. And so they can, get pretty, they can get pretty big. They don't bother you. They don't bite you. They do have a stinger. And I heard, I heard it's a rumor that if you get stung, it's no worse than a bee. Now, I don't want to test that theory. I don't want to get stung by a scorpion, but I do enjoy seeing the Milky Way. I bring my black light out, and I go walking around. And usually, depending on... Uh, where I'm at, if I'm in the desert, I can find the scorpion, and it just makes my day. So, scorpion hunting, it's a real thing. Who would have thunk it? So, if you want to learn more, uh, one of the things you can do is get an app, an app for your smartphone. If you have a, uh, and you can point your app, you can point your smartphone, and you can type in anything that you want. For example, let's say you're trying to find Polaris. Well, it's it has a little arrow, and you can point it, and it'll tell you exactly where to go, where Polaris is. If you want to find Andromeda, you type it in, and it'll point you straight to Andromeda. Pretty fascinating. Sky Guide, for the, if you have an iPhone, Star Walk 2, if you were, uh, have an Android. But these apps are just a couple of dollars and totally, absolutely worth it. Another free resource is Stellarium. Uh, they have a website that you can go to. Either download it to your computer or on your phone or on your on a web browser and you can look at any place in the sky and figure out where the stars are going to be. I was using Stellarium planning a shoot this Saturday morning at 7.35 a.m. The International Space Station is going to be going across the sun for 2.3 seconds. So I'm going to get there at 5.30 in the morning. I'm going to set up my tracker, I'm going to aim it at Polaris, 
So I know exactly where I'm at. I'm going to have everything set up, and it's going to track the sun as it rises. And at 7.35, for 2.3 seconds, the International Space Station, and I'm using Stellarium to plan that shoot. So it's, a, it's an incredibly accurate, free resource that, uh, that's available to you. And I, I enjoy putting together calendars. Uh, I shoot all over Redlands. I shoot all over uh, the Southern California. And I am announcing today my 2021 Astro Calendar. Some of my favorite images I took this past year from Borrego Springs. You recognize this one over here uh, in the volcano, taking the pictures of the Milky Way in the volcano, uh, Joshua Tree, uh, Big Bear. You recognize that one over here. We got the moon, we got star trails, and that's going to be available right here at the Redlands Visitor Center. So if you have an opportunity to come on down, there's other pictures here. I have uh, my coloring book, Color Me Redlands. I'm working on a second coloring book and an activity book right now, working out the details. Uh, I have note cards over here uh, that are available for, for you adults. And then uh, I have my Redlands calendar as well. And I'm putting the final touches on my 2021 uh, calendar. But it's a, it, there's so many things to see here at the Redlands Visitor Center. I would encourage you to come on. It's a field trip in and of itself, totally worth it. And so I have enjoyed the time spending with you, looking at the stars, the amazing moon, the Milky Way, comets, meteors. There's so much to see and so much to learn. So I wish you clear skies and look to the heavens. Great seeing you guys.